<laughs> let's bring in Labenthal Global Advisors President Dominic Tavella. Dominic, um, let's talk about this. Good because, morning. Sir. Good morning. Uh, Mark Tepper and I are on set together. We were just saying in the commercial break about your inflation calls. You're, you think that inflation on the headline basis is going to be down to about 5% by the end of the year. Why do you say that? Yeah, so so in the five to six percent range is is really where we're targeting, and it is that we're seeing a lot of things that caused inflation starting to roll over. Obviously, the price of energy has come way down. The price of commodities has come way down. Um, used cars has come way down. But it's going to be sticky inflation. It's not going away uh, anytime soon, and certainly not going away by the end of this year. Hey, Dominic, it's Mark Tepper. Um, Good morning, Mark. Good morning. So with regards to inflation, kind of as we look forward into 2023, we've heard, you know, more and more members of the Fed come out with with more hawkish tones, whether it was Loretta Mester um, or we heard, you know, from the New York Fed earlier this week that that they want to see positive real rates, right, which would mean the Fed funds rate has to get above and beyond where the inflation rate is. Where do you stand on whether or not there will be a Fed pivot sometime next year? Well, I think the best case early next year is a Fed pause. This idea just a couple of weeks ago that the Fed was going to start cutting rates, I, I honestly think was absurd. And the market's realizing that now. The really uh, aggressive comments by Fed Chairman Powell and, and yesterday's comments uh, by other Fed uh, participants, there's no way the Fed's going to cut rates anytime soon. But I could see a pause early next year, January, February, where they're just going to allow the economy to kind of coast for a little while and hopefully not push us into a deep recession. Dominic, I want to talk to you about the the labor market. Um, You know, we've got the August jobs report coming out uh, tomorrow. We've got initial claims coming out uh, about 16 minutes from now. Yeah, that weaker than expected ADP report, only 132,000 private sector jobs. We were looking for 288, so that was rough. But then also we're, we're hearing more and more companies talk about cutting jobs. And I don't think that's getting enough attention because if all these companies are cutting and cutting and cutting, you know, that tells me that not only is the recession really taking hold, also tells me that we're going to see some very, very weak jobs numbers. And I think that could be tomorrow. What do you say? Um, so that's the canary in the coal mine, uh, Cheryl. I mean, literally, we're not paying attention almost on a daily basis. We're seeing companies announce these job cuts. Now, honestly, they're happening from that speculative tech sector. We're not really seeing it happening in, in manufacturing, and we're not really seeing happening in, in hospitality or restaurants. So it's a pivot away from these high tech jobs that were very speculative companies to more traditional uh, industrial type companies. But what we're really seeing is people coming off of the sidelines, people that had gotten and took early retirement, people that had left the job market, was sitting on the sidelines, life was good, but now they're paying higher costs every day for commodities and products and services. They have to come back into the job market. So it's this pivot away from a certain types of jobs and other people coming back into the job market. So I think it's kind of going to float around around that break-even number, that neutral number, but you could see unemployment slightly tick higher higher. Real quick before you go, I was looking at some of the things that you like, financials and energy, large value. Energy is interesting, though, because that's one of the things that's actually held the market up and been strong uh, up until now. But now we're seeing oil prices falter. Not a shock. It's the end of the summer. Do you think that energy is going to tick back up? Do you think the sector is going to tick back up? Uh, I do. The the energy markets are pricing in two things. One, that we're going to go into a recession, maybe a deep recession, and then consumption would go way down. And the second thing is this possible Iran deal, where if the Biden administration agrees to this new deal with Iran, they could flood the world global markets with energy. Honestly, I don't see a deep recession. I think energy demand goes higher through the end of the year. I think energy prices go higher through the end of the year. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's... uh... Good for the investor, not so great for the American uh, driver. <laughs> we'll not so see. great for the, that's why inflation doesn't go dramatically lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a very, very good point. Uh, well, that headline number, again, if we get to 5%, uh, you know, you'll be getting a Christmas present from me. Uh, Dominic Tavallo, <laughs> it's always good to see you. Thank you for being on. It's good to see you, sir.